Let's now consider some of the distinguishing characteristics of survey research. Today we almost take surveys for granted. They're a part of our lives and they're used in many fields of uh, human activity, whether it's uh, political polls or um, survey re uh, responses to reality TV shows, customer satisfaction surveys, online surveys and so on. They're, they're very much part of our lives. But a hundred years ago, surveys were almost non-existent. So surveys have evolved quite rapidly uh, during the 20th century, in many ways in parallel with uh, the development of personal computers, which have given us the power to um, enter the data and analyze it much more efficiently. Uh, and this is, was also driven through um, the need for uh, as a result of industri industrialization to quickly sort people um, into uh, what people who may be allowed into a country or out of a country in the case of uh, mass um, immigration or sorting out um, army personnel very quickly into jobs uh, where they were best suited. So surveys were um, uh, initially things like IQ tests and uh, personality tests were uh, as well as attitude surveys became very important during the, the mid um, mid 20th century and since then and particularly since the 1980s there's been quite a science with um, key theories and principles which have evolved on how to conduct effective uh, surveys and well well designed surveys part of which is what we're going to be looking at next week as well as how to do effective sampling so there's quite a science now behind how you go about um, systematically designing and collecting objective data uh, through surveys and questionnaires. So surveys uh, are used in many fields including um, uh, demographics. So the census is a good example of a survey which is very well developed and very widely implemented with very significant um, uh, community value. The, the, the data that comes through through that guides uh, the direction of funding and um, policy and so on. Uh, increasingly marketing people are using customer satisfaction surveys to um, learn more about their customers and what their customers want. Uh, in politics uh, uh, there's much use of polls and then the actual election itself can be thought of as uh, a survey of community attitudes. So it's very important in democracy to be able to objectively gather data in order to guide governance from, uh, from a community and people. In psychology, uh, we look at attitudes, emotions, uh, motivations, and we'll, there's the next slide expands on that a bit. And in sociology, they're used for uh, analysing social trends. Uh, so in psychology, we use surveys to gather attitudes and opinions, uh, find out about people's behaviours, such as uh, the extent to which they recycle various items, uh, motivations, such as why you might want to attend university or motivations for doing a particular kind of job or role, emotions, satisfaction, and so on. So these next few slides uh, focus on several ways in which we might characterise surveys and distinguish them from other research methods. Uh, they're widely used and uh, that in itself, the, the ubiquity of surveys makes them uh, notable uh, and so not only is this technique used in psychology but it's a widely used one for, for other fields including non-research fields. Um, where people might just want to evaluate or, 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 or source some more object objective information than just uh, hearsay or, or anecdote. And that's really this uh, leads into this second point that s surveys, in order to be a, a, a survey, a legitimate survey study, um, there needs to be some systematic and specific procedures that are followed, uh, which ensure that the process, as much as possible, uh, follows the scientific method. Uh, which emphasises objectivity and um, representative data sampling. The main types of surveys uh, to 
initially think about is that surveys can be interview based or questionnaire based. So we commonly probably think of surveys as questionnaire, self-report questionnaires, but they can also be delivered as interviews, whether that's face-to-face, -face, uh, online or on the telephone. Um, and in that case, the researcher records the responses, re reads out and then records the responses, whereas in the, the questionnaire, uh, the respondent themselves works through the survey and, um, and completes their own answers. Uh, I've mentioned sampling a couple of times. S uh, survey research emphasises um, the impartial sampling of units. By units, we typically mean participants or, or respondents, but it could also be, such as in the census, that um, the respondent or the unit of analysis is a household, or we may send a survey to a uh, series of organisations. The units of analysis in that case are organisations. So these units are selected from the population without prejudice or preference and so as to be representative. So the idea is that we can dip our hand into a bag of marbles uh, and pull out a selection of the marbles and that they should be representative of the whole whole bag and that that should be done uh, uh, without bias. Uh, the data that we collect it's often quantitative, and that is uh, n numerically based, but it can also be qualitative, and uh, that shouldn't be forgotten that we can collect open-ended data through, through surveys. Uh, good survey research is also replicable. In other words, the process is written up and objective and available to others to scrutinise, such that somebody in a different time and place could rerun that survey s uh, study and um, that's one of the key criteria for the method section in your lab report is that you should report it in such a way that somebody can um, can replicate the study much like a good recipe book book allows um, other people in other countries and times to essentially replicate the same meal <coughs> 